You know, David, my, one of my first jobs when I was young was actually in a in a bicycle factory. And it was it was it was a really rewarding experience because I was there a week and they made me the spokesperson. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. On a bright note, everybody, things can only get better for the next uh, you know, hour or so, let's face it. Yeah, um, indeed. Um, well, uh, there's actually, the, the waiting room um, has calmed down very quickly tonight. Um, there's usually, as I always say at the start of these, it's, it's like a, a, a 30 seconds where people are, jo you know, there's like a little joining icon next to their name, but everyone seems to be, be on and can hear us. Um, although the chat is, is remarkably quiet, but... Um, so um, hopefully, if your if your audio was slow and connecting, you might have got away with not hearing that joke. But anyway, we may as well um, get going because we're 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 a little bit past half past. So um, for those of you folks in this, I think there's a lot of you. This was an incredibly fast selling pack um, who who are joining us for the first time. We do want to hear your choice, taste notes, your comments, get your feedback into the the chat throughout. And at the end, I'll be giving you a discount code that will give you fifteen percent off. Um, the whiskies we've sampled tonight, uh, and I must say it's it's an, it's a very exciting range. For those of you who join us join us regularly, you will know David. David, you, you're you a very frequent guest, probably our most frequent guest on Digital Drams, um, and and we're all the better for it. Um, we were just saying about six weeks ago you were on on giving us a Lefroy run through, um, and we were well overdue a, a Bowmore one. So um, very excited to kind of return to to Isla with you. For those though who are on the call who might not know you, um, do you want to give a, a brief introduction to yourself and your role with within Edrington Beam? Um, absolutely. So good evening, everybody. Yeah, um, I am the, my, my uh, somewhat uh, ridiculous job title is Senior Whiskey Specialist. I get to do the training, the advocacy, the chat across all the whiskies in our portfolio. Um, so that on the Edrington side, that is the Macallan, it's Highland Park, it's the Glenrothes. Um, on the Beam Suntory side, it is uh, Lefroy. It's not that we do much, but every now and then it's Glengarry or it's Ockentoshan, it's Ardmore. And as with this evening, it's Beaumont. So I'm really lucky. I work across a whole range of different malt whiskies. Um, it does mean, you know, I'm not loyal just to one of those whisk of, of those distilleries, one of those brands. I'm. I like to think of myself as being an equal opportunities drinker. Um, I am happy to give any and all of those whiskies a a chance, and fortunately, they keep giving me a chance back as well. Um, there is that all my children. But there is a side of me that absolutely loves Beaumont. And it's not just because of the Aston Martin tie-in, which is something I think we're going to get to. It's not just because of those whiskies they're producing. Um, I think Beaumont, as a distillery, is producing some of the most vibrant, fun, exciting, you know, core range whiskies out there at the moment as well as their really, really you know, brilliant, uh, wonderful, you know, those classic tropical fruit note tasting um, older whiskies that they've still got there in the portfolio. So no. really, that's my way of saying lucky me. <laughs> no, indeed. You say, you know, it's hard to have a favourite or whatever, but, um, you know, as, as uh, they say back where I'm from, when, they, when someone says, what's your favourite whiskey? They say, whichever one you're about to pour me. So... Uh, so speaking of the, the the wide portfolio that that Bowmore have, and and uh, on that note, maybe we, we might go through the lineup. I presume it's a fairly obvious one tonight. We'll go through them in 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 order of age, will we? Well, uh, absolutely. I think spectrum. that makes a lot of sense to me. So twelve, fifteen, eighteen. We then do have the two twenty-two year olds, just to be a little bit confusing at the end. Um, but I would suggest that we do do the um, master selection two, followed by the three um, in that order. And if I've learned one thing over the years of doing these things, uh, these tastings, Luke, it's don't keep your audience waiting for a whiskey. So no. I think, um, could I suggest and ask everyone to maybe crack open the Beaumont 12 and pour yourselves a dram? Now. Because it is something we are going to talk about quite a lot. I mean, through this, but in particular, when we get to the the two um, Aston Martin whiskies, or the last one in particular, where we are going to be talking 
a lot about wood influence and it's not possible really to talk about whiskey without talking about maturation and wood but I think it and it's people like me who are to blame for this we sometimes talk too much about wood and we lay so much emphasis on the cask influence and what's happening in the warehouses and what the wood had in it previously that we don't allow enough credit for what's actually happening at the distillery, what the distilleries are giving us in terms of distillery character. And you know, if it was just about the wood, you know, you know, theoretically all Scotland needs is one huge super distillery in the middle sending spirit out to everybody who in fact are no longer distilling. They are just casking it and maturing it and marrying and blending it and still creating wonderful whiskey but it would just be really about the cask and the maturation so let's look a little bit more at the distillery influence here and again yeah, one of the reasons i'm lucky one of the reasons you know we've got a great lineup tonight um if you're looking at distillery influence it really makes it a lot easier to think about that to talk about that and to recognize that when your distillery has its own floor maltings. So Beaumont does have its own floor maltings. We are one of, I think I have to say, 10 distilleries now in Scotland to have their own floor maltings. Um, it does make a difference to the flavor of our finished whiskey. What we can contribute there is absolutely, you know, the floor maltings is an integral part of our finished flavor. Um, if you haven't already, everyone, please, let's have a little nose of what we've got with the 12-year-old here. It's a lot more um, sort of sweeter on the nose than I actually remember. I haven't had this dram for, for a while. Um, it, it is a dram that, I go back to where, almost like where we started. It's kind of, like, you know, it's vibrant. It's kind of like fun in the glass and we don't use the word fun often enough about whiskey, I feel. And, you know, you get the smoke, it's a bow or it's a peated whiskey, but it's not totally, totally dominant on mm. this at all. Um, no, definitely. It'd be interesting to get people's thoughts in, in the in, in the chat. The um, I know For people who maybe haven't tasted like, it for a while, what their reaction to this is would be fascinating because mm. it's got it's got it's got sort of like a bit of honey and citrus there but there's something kind of caramelized in there as well yep. so having said i want to talk all about the distillery character bomo we do nearly always use a combination of both um bourbon and sherry casks um so this does have some sherry cask influence there i think the bourbon is more dominant i think you get that sweetness you get the but we do always um yeah combine casks um i think my first bomber was the 15 years and years ago which maybe set a, an unfair um, okay. <laughs> level of expectation for the 12s Absolutely. Um, so. <laughs> but yeah so i think for that reason I, I rarely actually go for the for the 12 but it's a it's a it's a it's a very uh drinkable dram not yeah. as peated as i remember maybe it's just because um we've done a few pieces of digital drams recently but it doesn't have that kind of really intense smoke that people kind of tend to talk about bomber for no, I, you know, and, and i mean i do switch back to the 12 quite often um and it never ceases to quite surprise me just yeah how it doesn't quite have that smoke but so much else is happening there it's uh i've seen some of the you know, tasting notes i saw someone mentioned something about being quite floral um yeah craig has said quite floral on the nose a hint of stewed apples hint of spicy smoke in the tasting uh that lessens on second taste Jeff says, it's been years since I've had a 12-year-old. Uh, you forget how good it is. Sean says, very smooth for such a young whiskey. Nice mix of smoke and sweet. It doesn't stick around, though. Um, a favourite. Uh, I detect an element of burnt toffee. Burnt toffee is, is, is a, yeah, I suppose that's, that's also what I was thinking with the kind of caramel, Absolutely. sugar, yeah. those kind of lines. Definitely. Yeah, when we get on to um, the 15-year-old, that sort of flavour, but you know, it's there in the 12. Um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. 
it's one of my favorite descriptions of it was um it's um like eating vanilla ice cream by a beachside bonfire um yeah which and you know you think yeah that you get that vanilla from the american oak coming through it is there's definitely a kind of a a, a burnt alaska element to it as well um yeah yeah, uh, definitely the kind of spirity sweetness, but also, yeah, um, it's yeah, it's it's very nice, and uh, yeah, maybe a bit of banoffee pie type thing, but yeah, on the finish. Yeah. But, do you know what? The, there is that you know, you know, there is a, that little sort of slightly maritime and a little bit of saltiness coming through on it. It's uh, definitely the um. So anyway, while while we while we sip away at this at this dram, um, do you want to maybe go back into kind of that that the the, the story of Bowmore and 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 the the you know the the twelve. Yeah. Uh, so the so, uh, just, so just back to this idea of the you know the distillery character and our own floor maltings. So keep this in mind, in particular, I think for when we get to one of the Aston Martins, but maybe in the eighteen as well, you'll notice this a bit. Um, but that that absolute sort of classic. Beaumont aroma in the older whiskies. So, you know, the thing that made those legendary Beaumonts of the 1960s, when you start to get those tropical fruit notes, when you have a, you know, a whiskey from Isla and you're nosing passion fruit and mango, and it's like, you know, 20, 25 years ago, they've never even seen a passion fruit on a mango on Isla, and yet somehow they're producing a whiskey that has got that sort of flavour in it. Um, now, you speak to the guys at the distillery, and they are adamant, they swear that one of the reasons this flavour develops is because of having our own floor maltings, because of turning the barley by hand. The barley is all still rotated by hand. We're not using a machine to flip it about here. And the, the proof, if you like, and it's not a totally scientific proof, but it's a good proof, and we're going to go with this. So um, David Turner, the distillery manager, uh, about seven or eight years ago what we do on the floor maltings is only in about 20 to 25 percent of all the barley that we use that we need so the rest comes in from the mainland and it's always mixed together before being ground before going through being milled going through the process right so it's so it's it's a yeah so so every mash bill is only a percentage of your own in yes malting. absolutely but you do a separate batch that's just your in-house malting so this is what he did about eight years ago. All oh, right, so given the opportunity <laughs> to do it, story. So he ran, um, you know, he ran a sort of distillation run of hundred percent their own floor malted barley um, into American oak casks, and I was lucky enough. I was um, taking some uh, customers around. We were in the number one vaults at the distillery, and David walked in, and he told me about this and he said oh you've got to try this so he like cracked open one of the casks that was there um and it the time it was just shy of six years maturation but it had those tropical fruit notes so we usually when it's mixed in with the malt from the mainland it takes longer for these tropical fruit notes to come through anyone who's been lucky enough to taste a 25 bomo or older or one of those old 60s bottlings you know, you get this quite amazing fruit salad note there. Um, if you've got the opportunity just to do it with our own floor maltings, wow, it's there after, you know, six, seven years. So, like I say, now, I'm not sure that would stand up in a scientific journal, but it's not quite a double blind test, but it's it's good enough for now. Yeah, I think... No, dude, I mean, that, that, is, that is interesting. I mean, there's a lot of... Um... A lot more talk being in the in the industry in general now with that kind of provenance and of the of the grain and the and the malting and the different elements that 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 beyond um <clears throat> what was kind of talked about even just a few years ago. So it is interesting yeah. um that and the, the barley you're using is that that that's a source from the mainland, is it? Um so yes, it's a so all the basically all the barley comes from the mainland. The barley that we peat ourselves comes from, I think it's six different lowland farms. We we had a, a via Simpsons, but we have a you know a direct relationship with the farmers as well. So that barley arrives at the distillery for us to deal with. The rest of the barley comes from the mainland, and this is and again something else that helps to give Beaumont its character and its identity. And actually, I think we can argue 
gives a little extra complexity here, which is what we malt ourselves at the distillery. This we peat with Isla peat. It's dug from up, well, either from Laganmore or um, now closer to the coast even. Um, but the barley that comes from ready peated from the mainland, that's peated with mainland peat. That's peated with peat dug in Aberdeenshire. So if you think about the constituents of peat, our Isla peat, because it comes from peat bogs very close to the coast, the vegetation that has made that up is sea grass, seaweed, tough, hardier grasses, small bushes that can survive in that more maritime, salty environment. Mainland peat, you know, go back a couple of thousand years, mainland Scotland was pretty much covered by the Caledonian forest. So mainland peat is probably going to be a lot more woody just because of the nature of the vegetation that makes it up. So you're going to get a different smoke aroma when you burn that peat compared to our Isla peat. Mm -hmm. Something like Lefroig, which uses 100% Isla peat, because even the, the barley that Lefroig buy in, they get that from Port Ellen. And that's so this is all Isla peated, and that gives Lefroig that such a distinctive, um, you know, that TCP hospital, maritime, briny, all those things we talk about. We use this combination of two different peats. So, although indisputably, undeniably a peated whiskey, it's not totally dominated by the medicinal notes that we associate with Isla peat. It's just part of the recipe that we put together so we mm -hmm. get i i will argue a slightly more not more interesting because i love lefroy but we get a different peated flavor and aroma by combining two different types of peated barley yeah no that that, that makes that makes perfect sense i actually have a couple more questions on that leon but I, but we'll maybe slowly come on to the 15 because we be interested to compare the two as well as we go so i'm going to keep mm. Apologies to anyone who's, who's neck there is totally already, but I'm going to keep a small bit so I can do it yes. side by side. Um, Leon in the chat says there is a nice lingering taste uh, of the smoke, um, but it's really subtle and warming. Very nice. Jeff said had a few uh, had a day with Bowmore a few years ago and did some peat cutting with Eddie, the distillery manager. Then uh, that sounds like a cracking day. Um, Jeff, you know, do you know Eddie, um, David? So it's um, the last few years, it's been David, David Turner, who's been the manager there. So he's he's the manager who I sort of know a bit. I do know last time I was up there we were talking about this. because, And again, let's look at some of the differences that you can play around with with the peat here. So the peat that a Freud dig for them to burn at the distillery. They dig by hand. And one of the reasons they like this is that it keeps a bit more of the moisture, not just the water moisture a bit more sort of almost like the oils that are there but the bone more peat quite a lot of that is we use a machine to dig it mm. um so it is slightly more efficient but it squeezes out some of the the liquid some of the moisture from the peat when you use a machine um but again talk to david turner and so delighted to, you know you've got a chance to dig peat with eddie um but he's like you know his last comment to me about this was listen if you want to send a bunch of london bartenders up to isla to dig peat for a summer you send them up um we'll dig it by hand but you know if they don't turn up we're going to keep doing it with a with a machine so fair enough jeff were you a london bartender at the time <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no that i mean that sounds great i mean i um you know people who experience peat cutting in a different way have different relationships with it. I have very fond memories of doing it as a kid but uh, I'm not sure my my uncles uh, think of it so romantically, um, because yeah, when you when you're a kid helping turn a few sods is different than the backbreaking labour that's actually involved. Exactly, you're now doing like eight ten hours out in the the yeah. island, grizzle and rain and wind coming down on you and doing it. Down. <laughs> and at your age now, Luke, it wouldn't be anything like as much fun. Let's face it. So, no, thanks, David. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're probably true. Um, Jeff, they stayed in the Bowmore cottages next to the distillery. Um, I hear, I hear they are great. I'm still awaiting an invite from um from someone at Bowmore. Well, the reason you are awaiting your invite, Luke, is because they also um the cottages um have been opened, but the Harbour Inn, the little uh, hotel across the road, mm. 
has been closed since um, COVID, uh, but it's having a big refurb and it's going to be beautiful. It is going to be so boutique -y. It's going to be boutique enough for Luke from the whiskey shop to come along to right, it. Well, I, I stayed in boutique. That's what I'm saying around here. Yeah, I stayed in the town of Bournemouth. I can't actually remember the, the, the hotel. It's the one, there's the pier to the right of the distillery. Um, yes. Where you can look, where you stand at the pier and you look back at the distillery. Yep. And there's the hotel that's right there. That's not where yeah, that, that would be the, the so the Harbour Inn is just opposite the where the swimming pool is in the small right, yeah, yeah. warehouse outside. So there's, yeah, so there's a hotel right there. I had dinner there, but I didn't stay there. And then, but if you go back up and you take a left away from the distillery, somewhere there on the left. Yes. Yeah, there's another couple of inns down there. Yeah. Hotel, I think it's a different one, but anyway, it's a gorgeous town. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't do the distillery, funny enough, even though I was staying in Bowmore. We did nearly every other distillery in Isla. Speaking of which, as we kind of um, know, start nosing this 15-year-old, they obviously kill Coleman do in-house malting. Um, and but yes. a lot of a lot of the distilleries there are supplied by the Portel and Maltings. Where is where else in the island does there in uh, does any, anything else? So on the island is so Beaumont, Lefroy, Kilcoman, um, and oh my, the one beginning with A that has only just opened. I'm going to say Arbicky. I mean, no, I don't mean Arbicky. Um, Ard is it Ardnaho? Ardnaho, Ardnaho, I believe, have their own floor maltings. Mm. Then you've got to come over to the mainland. Oh, well, go around to Highland Park up in Orkney. They've got their own floor maltings. Come over to the mainland, Springbank. Um, Bowen, uh, yeah, Springbank. Bowen, uh, ben Riach have their own floor maltings, and uh, Glengarry reopened their own floor maltings two years ago after they did their big refurb. Very good, exciting, um, brilliant. So we'll come, we'll come on to the to the fifteen now. The color already struck me. The, the color differences. Yeah. Just... So much more sherry cask influence on the fifteen. Um, for me, it's that burnt cinder toffee sweetness. I was mentioning sort of the the caramel. Yeah, there was, there was a, a burnt toffee note. Where's it gone? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, but it's a fifteen that I get that real sort of cinder toffee sort of sweetness mm. to it. Um, so with the fifteen, this is probably going to be the most sherry. Maybe the Final 22 is up there, but certainly this is up there. It's one of the most sherried whiskies we're going to have this evening. And it is a combination, a marriage of casks. So some of the whiskey that's gone into this has been 15 years in American oak bourbon cask. Some of it has spent 15 years maturing in sherry season casks. And of those American oak of the bourbon barrels, a number of them, a percentage of them, the liquid will get transferred after about 12 years from the bourbon barrel to first fill European oak Oloroso season sherry cask for a further three years maturation. And so then in effect, we have three different cask types, three different maturations that we marry together for this in the finish mm. 15 is a huge favorite with a lot of people who work on Bowmore. the people who work at the distillery the people who work in the head office on it you know you can offer them the 18s and all sorts of things and uh, above that and they're like oh yeah that's great love it thank you and then they come back to the 15 it is a big big favorite with a lot of people who actually work on Bowmore. No, it's it's a gorgeous, yeah. As I say, it was the, the kind of the drama I was introduced to. Was it called something different a few years ago? Was it Bow More Darker or something like it that? It was the darkest, yes. The darkest. That was it. So basically we took the darkest off the label and obviously up to a point. The whiskey stayed the same. It keeps changing a little bit over the years, as you know, as we know happens. But fundamentally the whiskey stayed the same. Um it was just a bit ridiculous for Bowmore, a distillery that issued bottles called Black Bowmore. To also then have another whiskey that was called the darkest when it patently was not the darkest whiskey that we were putting out well that that reminds me of the old um the father ted joke about the priest socks you know where they're like it's the blackest socks ever but they only issue them to priests so everyone who goes out and buys black socks they think they've got black socks but it's just really 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 dark navy only catholic priests have really actually 
the black socks like you know it's it's funnier when um when it's when you know the <laughs> Listen, everyone was lucky enough to avoid your spokesperson joke earlier. So, you know, they, they <laughs> can only go up from here, Luke, really. Um, this 15 year old, now for me, you know, I'm thoroughly enjoying it in a whiskey tasting. This is such a glorious, you know, after dinner whiskey. This with a little bit of dark chocolate, a little bit of, you know, salted dark chocolate. This is absolutely. No, it is, it is gorgeous. James has said dark treacle, honeycomb. We'll get dark treacle, all honeycomb. of those things, yes. There is almost like a, a burnt agave kind of um, note to it, uh, which you don't often get with a with a whiskey, but yeah. yeah. Which um, would, would suggest, you know, almost like a slight, you know, herbaceous freshness that's there as well. Yeah. yeah. yeah you know, I, I mean, we do, I think you notice those slightly, yeah, the treacle, the cinder toffee, the burnt caramel, however you're describing it, you notice those notes first. Mm. But there is layers of flavour going on with this, and it does, um, oh, it's... Uh... And maybe a bit of dark chocolate on the finish as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is It is. It is gorgeous whiskey. Uh, James said coffee too, yeah, 100%. I, I agree with the coffee. Yeah. Um, comparing to the, the 212 to... 15 comparing the two 12 to 15 there was a clear uh boldness to the 15 much more punchy um totally agree leon much longer finish as well um it's a it's an interesting dram um yeah so this is 77 pounds at the moment on the whiskey shop um 15 percent off at the end um of the of the tasting so um hold on for that sean says this feels thicker uh in the mouth than the 12 um yeah, I, I can I can totally see where you're coming from, Sean. It's a bit bit drier as well for me, maybe slightly more tannic. Um, so it's definitely not. That, and that's on the finish though, isn't it, Lucas? Mm. I mean, I think you know the first sip you get the sweetness and the dark sweetness, the tree cool, however you, you know we're going to describe it. But mm. it has a bit of a finish, and you do get yeah, that slight tannic, the almost slightly cloves maybe coming through a bit of yes, yes, yeah, fancy, yeah. but a, that clove finish there as well, definitely. Mm. No, a hundred percent. It's it's far not knocking the twelve, but it's it is. It's a lot more complex and uh, yeah. you know, on, on every level from the, the taste to that kind of mouthfeel that Sean touches on. Yeah. And yeah, also, I know, to you know, go back to you know, a slightly sort of facile comparison, the, tw the 12's fun. The 12's, mm -hmm. you know, the 15 is a, you know, the 15's a little more serious. You know, the 15, yeah. you, 15, you have put the world to rights a little bit. The 15 is, you know, like is a, you know. 15's marriage material, like. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the fifteen is two of us deciding the world would be a better place if it was us running it. Um, the twelve is. Well, that was then, if, if that's the case, they should have left it as fifteen, the darkest, you know, because that sounds like a a, a grim <laughs> outcome, you know. <laughs> the two of us being like, yeah, we involved it, folks, to the gulags. Um, <laughs> um, no, yeah, definitely. Craig says it's it's a perfect sit around the campfire with friends and finish the bottle drama. A hundred percent, it it really is. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 a gorgeous dram. Absolutely, and you know, at yeah, that end of the evening dram, you know, I said after dinner, but hell yeah, around the campfire, totally, yes. Mm. And throughout the, I mean, we, we often when we have different brands on, um, David, we kind of we there's there's often a story where the kind of portfolios we know of today kind of tends to emerge uh, in the eighties or nineties, kind of poised, poised post oil uh, crisis. You know, these kind of big changes that happen in yeah. in, in whiskey in that in that period. Bowmore is one of the older distilleries on the island, or if not the oldest, I believe. Yeah, well, we take great pride in being the oldest. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what's it? 17? I have a 79. 79. Think. Brilliant. Yeah. And as with well, all whiskies, you know, all distilleries of that sort of age, it's always um, established in 1779. You know, yeah. we were making whiskey long before that. That's just this is just when we got caught, you know, busted <laughs> by customs and excise in 1779. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, when when it became legal. But the um, but so throughout, let's say in the last in the last fifty years, what's has Bowmore always been like? You know, twelve year old single malt was it used in blends prior to, at one point. Was, um, kind of... Bowmore, uh, listen, uh, Bowmore has had a, an interesting history in the last fifty years or so. It has had its ups and downs, and believe me, the downs were down. Um, there was a long period in the you know the dog days of the whiskey world when you know. Everything that Bowmore was producing was going into blends, pretty much. Um, we were, um, yeah, we were, we were, 
market, I could say a supermarket, not even that. We were a market store. We were piling it high and selling it cheap. Um, we were making it quickly. We were making it too quickly. Um, there was that. It is a slightly weird sort of paradox almost that we in the you know, 60s or 70s were making some of the whiskey that is some of the most legendary single malt whiskey that there is out there. Those Black Bow Moors, the, um, you know, so these 50 year old whiskies from that period, which are so sought after and you know, talked about in sort of old tones of reverence here. Um, there's a look, you're leading me down a path which is you know I've started off so I'm going to have to go down here and I'm not going to thank you for it afterwards um there was a period because we were doing very short uh, fermentations we were rushing distillation we were not aging for as long as it should have been aged for maybe um the barrels the casks were maybe not quite of the quality they should have been um there was a period when Bowmore's whiskey was known as um, FWP. Okay. I'm guessing so quite a few people will be able to guess in the chat what that stands for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure in the chat if you want to uh, like, have a guess if you if you know what FWP stands for here. Yeah? Um, let me think. I've I've ima imagined it, 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 it's a profanity. It's not quite obscene. The F is no. not what you think it is there. Okay. Um, but it is not a compliment about the quality of the whiskey. Um, is the W stand for wash? No? Water? No, the, the W fire, is... Fire, water, scotch, whiskey, piss. Scotch, whiskey, piss. Did you say S, W? F, F, no, sorry. F, F, yeah, F, 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 F for Lomenko. For... Yes. What's it in the... Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um... So, um, actually, if, if people are making guesses like that, I think I'm going to have to put us all out of our misery here because it, it's actually going to get even worse than it really is. <laughs> um, for women, probably. Ooh, okay. Yeah, Heading down the know. right lines, but um, we're going to get in so much trouble here. So, it was um, <sighs> French horse perfume. Okay. Because it had this... We were put whiskey out there. It had this real. Like, I don't know which one's more sexist, the the, the actual answer or James's, but I know it, 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 this synthetic, artificial floral note to it, um, and it was very Palmer violety, but the worst mm. kind of cheap, um, you know, version, yeah. sweet shop uh, aroma and flavour. Mm. Um, there is, a, there is a slight irony in all of this is that, and you know, so this was used as a bit of a rod to beat Beaumont down with, and, but, you know, it was based on a certain truth. We were, some of that whiskey at that period was not great. Um, now, a few years ago, and again, some people might have seen it, might have been lucky enough to try it. Um, an independent bottler put out a whiskey from that era from Beaumont. Um and it was just, I think it was just bottled as, as an Isla whiskey. Um, but it was um it was called Isla Violets. Um and when it was at over, you know, this was over it was over 20 years of age, the whiskey that came out. And yeah, I mean it was, but this was like Palma Violets, but in a really good way. Mm. But it was um you know, it was that it was very much <laughs> building on those foundations of what had not been great previously. A lot of the truth of what's happened here is that basically when Suntory bought out the Morrison side of Morrison Beaumont, um, Suntory invested a lot of money in the distillery that, that it needed. And that meant we could slow things down. That meant we could put in more of a focus really on the quality and not just the quantity. And we could, you know, allow ourselves time to build up really you know great stocks in the warehouses um now but... you're now you're the chanel number five of 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 of, it, of whiskey well I, you know i'm so, and, and, this, free, you and know? this is why nobody lets you do the advertising and marketing for their brands <laughs> hey i mean you're you know you're you're um your neighbors uh at, at, at ardbeg their owners like the the most valuable company in 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 the whole of europe well, yeah you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but the um Nicola, who at the very start of the chat actually said long time no see. Um so I'm I I don't know where you know each other from, but um Nicola Rune. Um well, around and about, but from the depths of South London, let it be said. Yeah, South London and proud. 
Um, my favorite Bomar note is Parma Violet, and I keep seeking it. So there, um, there you go. The Parma Violet. So I think it was called Isla Violets. The bottling he's looking for there. Um, Marvelous. So, um, and actually, just on that, and this idea of you know, the investment, how we change things. Just uh, like I say, so it must be last summer. Um, but what added in a new one extra. Um, washback so not just a replacement they added in an extra um washback and not so that they could increase the pr production basically but so they could slow down the fermentation even more it allowed them leeway to so the fermentation times will be now stretching up to probably around 80 hours or so so we're not going to see the difference coming through for and still for another 12 15 years but just as an uh an indicator, if you like, that the focus now is so much on the the quality of what we're doing and what we can get out in 12, 15, 18 years time. But even I think the desire to make things better really comes through in these like the 12 and 15 year old whiskies. You know, you get this vibrancy and liveliness and you know, they have a you know, the 12 youth, you know, might not have had the greatest finish, the, well, not the greatest, but the longest finish in the world, the 12 might not have had you know, all the complexity, but it's uh, got the quality that maybe it would not have had for a 12-year-old 12, 12 years ago. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I mean, speaking of the of the, the 12 and and uh, and that, I mean, it'd be interesting to, to come on to the 18 now because it's going to be hard to see the 15, uh, anything topping the 15 and yeah, we've got this 18 and these two. Ah, so this, so you put the challenge down there. Yeah, the gauntlet's now, been made. 18 uh, does go, I can say, a slightly different direction. It's um, it's almost like, a, you know, slightly more closely related to the 12. It's got, um, so still bourbon and sherry cask influence. But the sh sherry casks are not as dominant as they are with the 15. Hmm. So that was a, just a quick rinse the glass of water before I pour my 18. It's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, the nose actually, it's that massively yeah. different. Maybe a slight bit more of, I don't know, it's something I can kind of put my finger on, maybe orchard fruit or something, maybe a red apple. Um, but Yeah, I think... <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, it was, it's almost, I'm mean, going a bit more down the almost like the site, the red fruit, almost like maybe it's like cherry, that sort of red fruit. Yeah, note, so. cherry. Hmm. Sorry, what did you say the, the difference in casking was there on this? So it is, still, um, it's going to be a lot of a uh, bourbon and sherry cask. Now, when we get to 18 and with the old, the older whiskies in the core range, certainly. Um, now, this is something that Beaumont do and something we do proudly um the love of the refill cask so sometimes because the easy metaphor the easy analogy with refill casks is the idea that um it's like using a tea bag again you can still get a cup of tea but it just takes a bit longer but also no one really wants to reuse a tea bag and so the refill cask gets looked down on a bit as not having the quality that you want. We love refill casks and we love them because it comes back to this idea of allowing distillery character to come through. So our refill casks, yeah, you'll have lost some of the flavor from the wood, but what you really will have lost a lot of is the tannins from the wood. So when you then mature for 18, 25, 30 years, whatever it is, um, that's long enough to pull flavour from the oak. It's long enough to pull really interesting flavour because refill casks have been re-seasoned, re-marinated with our spirit, with our whiskies here, but the tannins don't dominate. Mm -hmm. You don't get many Beaumors that are big, chewy monsters. You know, you get Beaumors where, as you get to this sort of age, 
you get the fruitiness, you get the maybe this, I mean, the almost like a slight, you know, I mean, this is the one where I start to get a little bit of uh, sort of dark chocolate. Um, yeah, I, got, I definitely got on the 15, but it's 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 a lot. I got on the finish of the 15, but it's a lot stronger yeah. on the nose here, the dark chocolate. Great yeah. black grape on the nose, which is, I think, great taste to note. Uh, Whiskey Slayer said, I'm getting driftwood on the nose. Um, Alistair said, Alistair, excuse me, Alistair said, I hope only had one Bowmore. I was trying to remember which one it was. Tasted last year, this one. Um, <laughs> you found the silver slipper, Alistair. With the, Absolutely. Uh, the yeah um no it's a it's a it's an extraordinary expression i find you're you know be interesting to know um how, how the w clubbers take their tea um because i mean i actually genuinely leave my tea bag in when i'm making tea i had a tea when we were warming up today and you see the tea bag still in there but the i i like my tea tannic but having said that this is where i'm going with this uh david on your tea analogy <laughs> if someone said to me you're gonna have to make a tea over a three-year period I would go for a reused tea bag. I think that you know, <laughs> it would be it would be too much. Yeah. So you know, if you're if you're going yeah. for time, I think the refill is definitely worth yeah. it. I've no, I was with um, Ron Welsh, who has now just retired, but was our uh, whiskey blender, was our whiskey maker, um, and he someone was, it was pushing him a little bit about casks, and you know, don't you wish you could get, uh, you know sherry cast from a solera from 60 years ago and he was like absolutely not absolutely not all you're going to get from a cask like that is a bit of sherry but the wood has got nothing to give you there's nothing of interest in that sort of cask but then what he said was you know what my favorite cask type to play around with my favorite cask for maturation is a refill american oak bourbon hogshead so he like and again, American oak, because it has fewer tannins than European oak, American oak will probably allow more distillery character to stand out, to reveal itself. If it's a bourbon barrel, because it's had the level of char applied to it, so you are going to get a boost of sweetness because you've caramelized those own wood sugars there. But you've also, it, because it's a refill, quite a lot of that has been extracted again allowing distillery character what's actually there in our spirit to shine through a little bit more and that's why he likes them to be rebuilt into hogsheads rather than as asbs mm -hmm. is that the extra 50 liters the switch from 200 liter capacity to 250 liter capacity again you get slightly less influence from the wood you get all the influence you want but it allows distillery character to come through and because of turning the barley by hand all those things we've talked about here that is why refill casks can be absolutely wonderful because they allow your distillery character to come through i think we've established what my theme for the day is here <laughs> i mean in theory all casks are refill casks you know well yeah absolutely you know, that <laughs> bourbon or sherry in them port you know yeah, but you and your theories, they've got you into a lot of trouble over the years, Luke. No, so. they, they they have. I mean, on a molecular level, we're all refill, you know. We're all we're all just parts of the universe. But now that you know, yeah. and oh you know, they, no, but now they're <laughs> refill refills and actually refill, refill, refill. So yeah, Craig says uh, leaves an oily, waxy feel, feel in the mouth. Uh yeah. this is the last bone more I bought, forgot how marvelous this is. Um uh Nicholas says, unless it's virgin oak. Um that's true, that's true. Yes. Uh, I I was yeah. Uh, my my euphemism, my metaphor falls down there. Um, so I'm warning you, you won't get much past Nick. He's uh, he's going to pick you up like that. Believe me, I have experience in a good way. Um, no, brilliant. I mean, a virgin oak, yeah. So, and now, just debate, but... even with a couple of minutes in the glass, no. so it's like that. I'm ter Terry's chocolate orange. I'm getting that sort of uh, fruit peel coming through on this now. It's a good it's a good Easter drum, I suppose, in many ways. The Yeah. It's definitely it's got less of those maritime notes. Um yeah. there was maybe a bit more was it was someone said driftwood about maybe the was that about this one or the fifteen? I must check. But it was about this one. It was uh Yeah. It was uh, a yeah, whiskey Sarah. Sarah was yeah, whiskey uh, Sarah says, yeah, I'm getting driftwood on the nose. Um, I definitely get I get what you're saying about drifting on the nose, but those kind of bonfire, beachy, maritime vibes that we were speaking about earlier, for me personally, are less in your face in in, in this one. 
Um, but yeah, it's 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 very interesting, and it's it's not a huge jump up in price for from the fifteen either. Um, it would be hard to pick pick a pick a pick a, a favorite between the two actually. Um, I still might think the fifteen might edge it for me, but I might have to go back. Um, and I think try so because you know what I um. I have always been in the camp that slightly favoured the 12 and the 18 over the 15. It, it tends to be if you like the 12, you like the 18 and the 15, maybe not quite so much. Mm. People like the 15, not quite so keen on the 18. Yeah. I'm, oh boy, I am absolutely loving that 18 year old. This is to me, yeah, it's everything I want a whiskey to be in many ways. It's uh Especially no, it, it, ridiculously, it, 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 you know, like great value price you're selling it for, Luke, because you're such a gentleman around here. Well, I mean, this that's before the discount as well, David. You know, this is I'll actually tell you how much it is with the discount. The it's interesting you say about the, the 15 and, and 18. I mean, I I I need I'll keep sipping away at this anyway, you know, my opinion could change, but it's a it's it's a funny one that you often find in 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 with whiskey brands where people where you have a let's say a, a 10 or a 12 a middle one, a 15 or 16, and then an 18 or 21 as part of the kind of core range. The middle one often splits the opinion. It's either like red, red breast, I'm a big fan of, of red breast. And yeah. there's people either think that the, the 12 and 21 are the be all and end all, forget about the 15, or people say the 15 is better than the 21 and you're you're wasting your money jumping up the yeah. price point. Um, Absolutely. And also, I mean, I think McAllen's another great example of that, the double cask range. People who like the 12, mm. tend to like the 18 and, um, not the 15 so much and vice versa yeah yeah mel says 18 more salty than the 15 for me toffee and smoke on the palate um definitely i mean the toffee seems to have been the the theme the the linkage throughout them all they all seem to have had that kind of um the kind of caramel toffee note um as burnt toffee someone had mentioned previously um so the this whiskey with this is 80 pounds with your w club discount at the end um steph said very often 15 is a super sweet spot for whiskey um totally totally agree definitely and a sweet spot in many ways when you have when you have something around that it can be a sweet spot in terms of age but also in terms of price point as well um steph i'm sure you'd agree Did so you just say 80 pounds for the 18 year old yes i don't think i can get it that cheap from our staff shop well there you go folks get it while it lasts that discounts valid for two weeks um <laughs> from the point of today from the uh not from the point of purchase because uh, you know first yeah so um, hang around for that code. Sean says, um, expect except red breast uh, in the twelve twenty one team. Um, so yeah, yeah. There so you go. You, you, you go introducing whiskey from that other island off the west coast of Scotland. From, from, so. from a different company. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I've been trying to get a red breast tasting going, uh, David, but they just keep sending you back. <laughs> 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 um. No, I'm, I'm I'm being facetious. Um, you are my favourite um guest to have on. Oh, I I bet you say that to all the ambassadors. You no, I I've said that to a few mostly. Um, but but not 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 all people on here will testify that you know <laughs> gets mentioned occasionally. <laughs> but yeah, um, so so yeah, no, this is apologies for when you know the whiskey. This actually is is a tremendous dram. Um, really really enjoying it. And it's it's uh it's maybe set the stage nicely for the the Aston Martins. Before we actually come on to them, do you want to maybe give a bit a bit of a background on that range? Or yeah, I would love to. So Mel's Probably. trying to get the discount code. We tried this so badly. Um, just at the end of two thousand and nineteen, going into twenty twenty, Beaumont and Aston Martin announced they were going into a, a partnership together and we all know what happened at the beginning of 2020 um so i have a particular regret about this i was meant to be taking a group of you know journalists uh on a trip like on like the pullman express uh, like almost like the orient express but the pullman express specially booked from london up to the highlands of scotland to get into aston martins to drive around and drink Bowmore. at the end of the trip i have to make that very clear and it all got pulled because of covid um but aston martin and Bowmore. i guess the phrase we can think about and use and please feel free to disagree and come up with your own versions of this but this idea of sort of understated excellence you know that if you see an Aston Martin on the street, you you know you almost have to do a sort of double take 
to realize just how beautiful it is. You know, it is not a Lamborghini or a Ferrari which shouts at you, look yeah. at me, look People at me. People should say the same thing about me. Well, how many of these trams have you had so far? <laughs> um, and, you know, we at you know, Beaumont, you know, we, we are not a whiskey with the biggest advertising budget in the world. We do not, you know, scream and shout and throw ourselves at you. But, you know, for a lot of whiskey drinkers, when you find Beaumont, you know, it's, uh, it is a little bit of a, oh, wow, yeah, that's that's a whiskey. So there is a rather lovely synergy between the elements of the two companies here. Um, I, I'm going to say this just one more time just to make sure I've been really clear because otherwise I get into a lot of trouble. Um, so Aston Martin is the journey and Beaumont is the destination and the two do not get mixed up. With these whiskies, so this Master Selection series, um, so when we launched the partnership, the first whiskey we launched in it was... Um, an Aston Martin Black Bowmore DB5 release. And it was a bottle and a whiskey of absolute beauty. It was one of the Black Bowmores that we still had some very limited stocks of. Aston Martin designed a bottle for us. And basically the bottom half of the bottle was the piston of a DB5. It looked absolutely beautiful. Um, and it was a great way to announce the partnership but the reality is that actually the whiskey already existed and yet it was a whole new bottle and bottle design but it wasn't a true true collaboration what is rather joyous about these whiskies in this master selection series is that these are genuinely a collaboration between the two companies and ron welsh our whiskey maker worked you know in tandem with Marek Reichman, who has got possibly the best job title in the world, he is the chief creative officer for Aston Martin. You know, he is the head of the design team. He makes Aston Martins. Um, and we sent whiskey samples from different casks to Marek Reichman and his design team. Um, they came up to the distillery to visit, to get a feel for it all. Ron got to drive Aston Martins around to get a feel for it all. Um, but they genuinely collaborated. And the first whiskey in the series, so I'm very sorry, everybody, the whiskey we don't have in the tasting today, because you will be lucky to get that now. Um, but this was the... Uh, ethos behind that was in the spirit of the golden ratio so the golden ratio is this glorious balance that makes great art beautiful that makes things in nature beautiful be it a, a nautilus seashell spiraling around be it the milky way at the you know, extremes of size of the galaxy be it an aston martin the golden ratio defines everything about why an aston martin looks beautiful because everything is in this perfect harmony in this ratio and what they because they did collaborate because it was a team effort basically thought, well what if we select different casks we have and use liquid from those casks in the golden ratio so they mm. applied the ethos of what makes an Aston Martin beautiful and what makes the Mona Lisa beautiful and what makes a Nautilus Seashell beautiful to what we could do to make a Beaumont whiskey. And it was absolutely joyous. The other side of it is that from Ron Welsh's side point of view, so as a whiskey maker, his vision, he wanted to create a whiskey that was like getting into an Aston Martin. So he wanted a whiskey that had absolute, you know, beauty to it. But when you did have your first sip, it was like hitting the ignition. You did go, whoa, that's got a bit of kick to it. You mean that's... a whiskey that's like start, starting an Aston Martin, not like yeah. banging your head, trying to... Yeah. <laughs> so... So I'm telling, I'm spending a bit too much time talking about a whiskey we're not going to get to taste here, but it sets the scene 
for these master selection and Ron and Marek and the teams did keep collaborating. So the one that we do have here, or so one of the first of them, so let's go for the master selection two. So it's a 22 year old, it's at 51.5% ABV. So I'm just going to... Uh, I was warned, my, my other half uh, is a big whiskey fan and she was like, um, she actually, just as before we came live, um, she walked, stuck her head in the door and she was like, that'll be a drop of whiskey left for me. So <laughs> this is the one, the, the only two, these last two are drams of the five are the only two I can't finish outright on the call because I'm going to have to <laughs> taste it. Um, and I know that's going to be difficult to resist, yeah. but, you know. So, so if you like, if the first one in the series, that was about the golden ratio, that was about how do I make a whiskey that's like an Aston Martin. This one was, this is all the twos. So this is... A, on the bottle, it is in the spirit of unity. So it's the two companies, it's 22 years of age. Actually, it's two different cask types. Um, it is, um, I guess those American oak uh, hogsheads and some sherry cask, but not much sherry cask going into it. Predominantly American oak hogshead. Um, it's actually two vintages. It is, um, it's a 22 year old, but it's whiskey that's either 22 years old of age or 25 years of age that has gone into this. And it is, to go back to those, talked about these, these American Oak Hogsheads, there's quite a lot of refill cask influence on this one because this is about allowing the distillery character to come through. So if the first one was, how do I make a whiskey like an Aston Martin? This is, it's obviously not an Aston Martin, but how can Aston Martin influence the whiskey to make it like a Beaumont whiskey? This is about, and I think you do get you get the you know the fruitiness on this one when you nose it. This has got that. No, it's very it's very, it's 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 so different than the than the first two. It's like, yeah. I'm just on the nose. I wouldn't have guessed it was. Um... Bomber. We've got some interesting comments coming in here as well on it. John says the the balance of flavor on this one is bang on. Um, it's it's actually, I could nearly nose that all day now. Um, yeah. it is it is lovely. Um, so if I was to walk with this into London, would I would I get um hit with a congestion charge? But <laughs> with the ULES, with the ultra low ULES, emission yeah. zone charge as well. Yes, it's a. I mean, surely between the the cotton of the turf yeah. inspired by the car, it's got to well, got to be. And you somewhere. say the cutting of the turf, but also so you know the side of the golden ratio. This is something that we took from Aston Martin, the spirit of unity. You know, that's us all working together. Um, but chatting to Ron about all of this, and it's like, well, you know, what have Aston Martin taken from you? One of the things that Aston Martin now think about way more than they ever did. One of the things that Aston Martin have taken from us. Malting their own so, barley. What does the car smell like? Ah, you know, brilliant, yeah. You know, everyone on this call, you know, you get a whiskey, what do you do? You nose it. Mm. And they actually you know, hang on, you know, it sounds weird. <laughs> it always sounds perverse. You know, who opens a car and smells it? But think how important, oh, it's, it's, that, it think how important yeah. that aroma of a car is. Totally. And they, I'm not saying they never did think about it, they are thinking about it more and more and more because of the collaboration between the companies. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. I mean, people go on about that new car smell. I mean, it is it is crucial. Yeah. The like these five star hotels spend it's it's a crazy rabbit hole to go down. The amount of money they spend on getting these special um brands to design a unique scent unique to the hotel, and then they pump it through the hallways and you don't even notice it. But somewhere in your mind, it's smelling it. So when you go in, you feel like, oh, that smell is the smell of the, the Balmoral, you know, um, or the Glen Eagles. So it is. These things are are, are really crucial, yeah. especially with a premium, a premium brand like Beaumont and a premium um, car like Aston Martin. Like um, we got some great um, comments in there. Mel says leather tobacco on the nose. I'm not sure if that's describing this whiskey or what his Aston Martin sounds like. It smells like <laughs> um, Craig says I, I had a, a hit of almond on the first tasting um but it's gone on the second now just getting uh dark fruits um yeah it's 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 an extraordinary whiskey i know i'm repeating myself here but having had two sips now i wouldn't have a it just doesn't taste like a, 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 if someone had handed me this i wouldn't have said it's a bow more um at least even going off the first th uh, mm. three 
but it is extraordinary. To me, it's almost slightly more smoky in a good way than than the other ones. Yeah. The peat that comes through more. I don't know what, what that is, David, but it's it's interesting. I think, and I, I know I'm getting a little more of that spice uh, on the finish of this as well. I think it's partly to do maybe with the little extra strength. You know, we're at fifty one point five percent ABV mm. here. Um, and here's another okay, another little story about these three whiskies in the Master Selection series. So they're all. So the first one was just 51.4. I think this is 51.5. The third is 51. Um, they're all they are all nearly, but not quite, and they're not cask strength. So, you know, on the one hand, you know, if these had all been done at cask strength, you know, that's a lot of the whiskey drinkers like cask strength whiskey, don't we? Well, of course we do. We love it because we get the choice about how much water, if any, we're going to add to it. No, no one's watering down the whiskey. It, this is the strength that it is. But with all of these whiskies, Ron Welsh has decided to add a little bit of water to them. Um, and it, you know, he went through it with his team and you know, they had it at cask strength and they added enough water to drop it by 0.1% and taste it again and 0.1% and taste it and taste it. And then when it tasted the best that Ron thought it could possibly taste. That's the strength that went into the bottle. So the 51.5% is not cask strength. It's optimal strength. 1.5% is the strength that Ron Welsh thinks this whiskey tastes its absolute best. Now, mm -hmm. if you would like to add some water to it, it's your whiskey, please do. But it's at this strength because that's what the whiskey maker thought was the best it could be. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Leon says, spice tropical fruits with an underlay of, of smoke. I definitely get those kind of dried tropical fruits. Um, and spiced is, is, is good as well. The kind of, um, yeah, kind of, uh, it's, 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 it's really interesting. Um, I'm finding it difficult to actually put words on some of it. There is, there's a lot going there. Um, you and do, it's... some of the more I sit with it, the more some of those earlier flavors come through that touch of toffee, the ones you know, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, I'm so it's almost like you know, sort of papaya and grilled pineapple, almost. Papaya, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, pineapple, it is, yeah. <sighs> you know, I, I know I'm a lucky, lucky person. Um, but every time I go back to these whiskies, I can never quite decide which one is my favorite, but oh, I do love them. I think this series they've created something really spectacularly good. Yeah, I think the twelve might just about edge this one, but um, but yeah, it's good. No, the um, Melissa, earthy, creamy, only slight smoke. As for the ABV, uh, the eighteen and fifteen feel higher than this because it's so smooth. Um, that's interesting. Seeing that, yeah, yeah I even noticed the ABV on it. In other words, Mel, yeah, I totally, I, I agree. I wouldn't have guessed it was um, what do you say, fifty one point eight? Uh, fifty one point five. Five, yeah. Um, but it is. It might be interesting, actually, to um, because you said they're the the two Aston Martins are, are very very different. Yes. So it might be interesting now. Well, before I finish this, to uh... yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yes, I would encourage this if anyone is you know people who've got two glasses there do please um maybe compare them. So the second one, so this is the third release, fifty one percent ABV. Um, this is uh, in the spirit of perpetuity. But this is this one is about the cask influence. This you are as much more sherry cask influence here. So the, the first color difference one, is huge. Yeah, hmm. absolutely. Master Selection Two about the distillery. This one, Master Selection Three. This is okay. Look what our casks will give you if we really select wisely around here. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, this one to me is, is is has a lot more identity of the um, fifteen and eighteen on the nose than yeah. um, the the number two does. I think, yeah, so I, mean, I get more of the sweetness, that caramel, slightly butterscotchy sweetness coming through on the nose. You know, that sherry cask influence is there. Um, I get rather glorious. So 
the first one in the series was a 21 year old that came out in 2021. The second one, the one we just tried, came out in 2022 and is a 22 year old. This one was released in 2023 and is also a 22 year old. And it's like, you know, Ron, Ron, why? Why did you do this? Could you not have? And he was brilliant because he just said, yeah, I could have done, but it wouldn't have been the whiskey that I wanted it to be. And this, you know, he had some casks that were 22 years old that absolutely slotted into his vision of what he wanted this third release in the series to be. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it's nice. I mean, I'm glad he stuck with 20, with 22 because it's nice to drink a whiskey that's the same age as you. But the... Sorry, I think if we added them all up. Luke... <laughs> Don't put yourself down like that, David. <laughs> the, um, yeah, no, it's 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 the, this one's really interesting. Um, and the bottle has changed. So the bottle is also quite uh, a different design than the first two, isn't it? Are they all behind you, by the way? I've just um, I've got. I haven't got this. I've, I've got this one. No, no, sorry. I've, I don't have this one. I've got the first two. I might have to put an order in with you for the for this one for the third one. But yeah, you can. I mean, the, the carton is really rather beautiful. Um, the bottle inside as well hmm. does look gorgeous um and then you know you can see that you know the theme continues but they are different yeah it's 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 clever branding in that way there's a consistency yeah, it, and it's it's even with the with the yeah it's a beautiful bottle um but even when i'm looking at the the the, the, the 20 the um mass selection three here in front of me and, and that one's kind of as you say it's 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 kept that consistent but it's 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 a lot of a look bottle looks a lot darker um like yeah. tinted compared to those ones um than the the number three yeah it's uh um so yeah again you know, aston martin had a big part to play in the bottle design and everything there as well without doubt but i think it's <clears throat> i think it's important to stress that um <clears throat> excuse me, Aston Martin played their part in the design of the whiskey as well. You know, they absolutely have a say. It is a, it is a collaboration. It is not just putting a, an Aston Martin logo on the bottle. There is way more to it than that. Um, um, and not to be outdone, um, you're, uh, uh, McAllen did one with, with Bentley or something, didn't they? Or are they? Uh, they did, yes, but, you know, <laughs> We were there first. That's all yeah. I'm saying about this. And uh, and uh, I mean, I, yes, I know McAllen pay my wages, but excuse me. <laughs> oh, wouldn't you rather drive an Aston Martin than a Bentley? Wouldn't you rather drink a Beaumont than a McAllen? Of course you would. Yeah, I'm I gonna think Bentley should have paid for England more than email on yeah. Tuesday morning. Having said things like that. <laughs> <laughs> So speaking of of we're rather rather driving an Aston Martin, it'd be interesting to know um which which a which one of the two of these. No, I mean we'll go at the end. We'll come to what everyone's favorite is. I I doubt it'll be the the well, maybe maybe people will prefer the fifteen, but I'll be all of these two which people prefer. Uh, and also which which um which Bond film is their favorite? Um, oh, that is the right yeah, character. Aston Martin Bond drives, isn't it? A whole series of votes at the end here. Um, <laughs> at the distillery now we have a an aston martin dbx so the dbx is their their suv um but it has been in a very tasteful and discreet as you would expect but rather beautiful um slightly you know bowmore branded so they've got sort of bowmore tartan like on in the interior of the car and other places and on the exterior there's just a couple of little strips down the side of the car which are these copper strips with Beaumont, but I believe I was told, I was told it must be true, and I'm telling you now, it's actually copper from one of the old stills. Oh, wow. It's been actually put onto the Aston Martin. Um, so there is the, you know, the intention of being able to give people a bit of an Aston Martin experience on Isla as well with, uh, with, you know, with Beaumont and with Aston Martin. 
Brilliant. Um, uh, the we've got a couple of answers here already. So both uh, Craig and Alistair have gone with number mass selection two. I presume you mean uh, the Aston Martin number two, not the second one we tried. Um, and uh, and live and let die says Craig and Casino Royale says Alistair. Um, it might be a golden eye, I think, for me. Um, what about yourself? I would I I would lean towards Casino Royale. I think that's a good good choice. Um, Skyfall. I did love Skyfall. Skyfall, yeah, yeah. Um, the, um, where he blows up the mansion in Scotland, is it? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I always hated that place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the um yeah the 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 sorry go on you were saying. No, no, I was, I was just looking at some of the comments. Going, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually now fascinated by people's favorite Bond movies. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Martin has said has gone for number two as well, um, and uh, Goldeneye because of the N64 game. I think that might be the on, on some level the same reason I, I like it, Martin. Um, we've got a sad to say the selection two is my favorite, as the selection three, uh, as the one I have is the selection three. Um, well. John, it's the, these two aren't on the site right now because I think we were discussing this with David actually before we went live. We we've reordered these ahead in advance. These tasting, but it should be live in the morning by the time the recording goes out. So if you want to complete the collection with selection two, um, that should be available by by lunchtime tomorrow on the website. Uh, Graham says three rather than two, but both superb. Uh, best blonde Bond car, the Sunbeam. Um, I don't know which one that one is. That one's in. Um. Sean says Thunderball and Selection 3. Thunderball is a great one. Um, two says The Spy Who Loved Me. Or Ian, sorry. Ian says Two and The Spy Who Loved Me. Um, but it's not an Aston Martin. Um, Stanley says Selection 2, Goldfinger. Uh, Chris says that was an amazing whiskey um, journey for this evening. Thanks, guys. Um, so, yeah, uh, definitely. I think Two seems to be the clear winner on that one. It's, it's um, getting it with, which, you know what? Which I'm absolutely delighted about because... And forgive me for repeating myself. Two was more about the distillery character rather than the oak. Three is about the oak, and I love it if it's that distillery character that's swinging the vote here, that's making this come through. No, I I totally agree. There is a few. I mean, Steph's come back in with three there as well. Um, so this is this is uh, yeah, but I think two and Nicholas there as well. First selection two, uh, the the spy who shagged me was his favorite. Um, uh um james bond film um john says thank you guys uh great drams thank you john thank you everyone for joining someone asked there um how much the aston martin number three is is 430 on our website um so you'll get your the discount code will cover this um as well so jay says aston martin 2 prefers the 15 to the 3 which is interesting um i'll stick the discount code in the chat now for you there folks um so this is WS, it's WS24. Mel, you guessed it, but you guessed close. I think you said uh, BM, but it's actually BAM for Aston Martin. Like, bam. I've act um, So that'll get you 15% off all the drams um, we've tried tonight and the two master selections because they needed to re-adding to the website. They'll be back up by tomorrow by when the, the uh, tasting email goes out, as I say. So if anyone wants to give the rest of their preferences like Jay has in the in the chat, please do get them in there. Um, or if you have any questions for for David before we finish up, um, that'd be great. Is there anything you want you wanted to add yourself, David, before while people are are giving their last questions and thoughts in, into the chat? Honestly, no. I mean, Luke, as you know, this is it is one of my favourite ways to spend an evening is doing this sort of tasting. Um, I absolutely am so pleased, you know, and proud to do it with Bowmore, um, because it is one of my favorite distilleries in our portfolio um and yeah it was a joyous selection of drams um and i think i think what we really got this evening was even for something like the 12 i think so many people here haven't tasted 12 for a long long time and it was great to be able just to remind people about that um and building right up these you know these aston martin whiskies are so glorious there's something you know i'm so happy and proud to talk about and be part of and one of these days my company car is going to be what i think it should be i mean it's not quite yet but well i mean they've got to give you i mean someone uh, made a joke in the comments as if there's an aston martin come free with each one um but surely you should be driving around in an aston martin do you not even get one like do the sales reps get one even temporarily 
not yet but you know i'm sure you know look, look you're a man of influence and power and prestige i'm sure you you know if you had a word with the right people um yeah i mean um i i i'm trying to think of a, a sarc an equally sarcastic response i come back to you but i can't after five whiskey <laughs> But the um, but I had, I had a cousin who worked for Dead Man's Fingers, the rum, um, and they used to have a a fleet of like sort of weird, well not weird, they weren't weird at all, but like sort of cool, trendy vehicles, um, that everyone wanted to drive that were like plastered with Dead Man's rum. So and they would rotate them around the sales reps. So um, you know, you'd have one for six months and then switch it out, but you'd always be driving this wacky car. That was that when you wherever you parked up, it was a talking point. And one of them was um a like a Mustang, one of these muscle cars, and it was like it looked really impressive. Like you walk past it, and I'm not a car guy at all at all, but I just wanted to sit inside it, like you know. Um, so yeah, that's what they gotta get for 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 you guys, like you know, so you can drive up to a tasting event, you know, shoot someone with a with by accidentally pressing you, you meant to indicate and you've you've set up oh, yeah, exactly and i say set up a rocket you know and i can see all of that happening without a doubt and it's like i do spend some time looking at the prices of secondhand aston martins and my wife is going don't you dare <laughs> maybe when you retire david <laughs> oh you're stuck is, with me for a is, year or two yet well i was gonna say yeah in about 20 years time that's oh uh, you say the sweetest things you i'm sure the i'm sure if you hang on to your bowmore aston martin collection in about 10 years you can sell it and buy an aston martin there you go <laughs> um no well that's excellent we'll see there's a few more comments in the in the chat there um so we've got people said yeah aston martin the aston martin number two seems to be the, the clear winner tonight and there's a few people with three um alistair actually says the 18 was was uh there's the best when he considers the price point i think it's a fair point um Sean's to be picking up an 18 um by favorite by far um excluding the Astons uh, so that's up the core um so yeah Chris says Luke will sort you and Aston Martin would you mind having a corgi uh on the underside um there you go <laughs> um so yeah they and Ian says great taste in tonight guys thank you thank you Ian for joining um so yeah any plans for the for the Easter weekend, uh, David? I know you said you actually said before you're going on, you're going you're going down to the coast. Um, yeah, I've got the opportunity to go to a little little holiday break on the Essex coast. So I'm in Frinton. Frinton famously the first had never had a pub until about twenty years ago, um, and then now there is sort of one pub and one wine bar in Frinton. And when the pub opened, the, one of the local residents wrote to the local newspaper to say that it, it was going to cause more damage to Frinton than the Luftwaffe managed in the war. It's that <laughs> sort of a place. <laughs> yeah, and, and is there is there all these drunken, drunken, disorderly people eating kebabs and pissing on the street in Frinton? Absolutely not. There's, they, you're not even allowed to have an ice cream van not by the beach because it's uh, far too genteel. <laughs> oh, wow, and it's in Essex. That's ironic, isn't it? And the, it's sandwiched um, between... Walton and Clapton, which are the absolute the antithesis and the opposite of that. Brilliant. Um, well, that sounds like it's going to be a great weekend. I hope everyone else on here has a has a great Easter weekend. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, I can't wait to um, to get back to drinking whiskey once Lent is over. So um, the... you were doing all right tonight, it seemed to me. Pardon? You were doing all right tonight, it seemed to me. No, I was. I was just pretending. Um, <laughs> the. I'm trying to think of a Bible parable that would allow me to get out of this, but um, I can't see Kevin Wright in the in the chat. We um, so he can't advise me. Um, this is like burying the talons, you know. And uh, you know that my my master will come back and be like, "Why did you just hide them? You need to be um, selling talons, isn't that? That's a Bible parable. So someone on here gets that reference. Um, anyway. The thank you everyone. Ha, have a great weekend. Um and uh and thank you for joining us. Hopefully we'll have you on again, um, David. Uh, I know we've we've already been chat with Sarah about a, a lot more tastings coming up, so I'm sure you'll be I hope so. I would love it. Everybody, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for your time and uh everybody, yeah, have a brilliant holiday, have a brilliant Easter, and I hope we will see you all again soon. Yeah, marvelous. And um, for one last time, the discount code is WS24A. Oh, sorry, B A M. Um, and that'll get you 15% off all these. And have a great Easter weekend, folks. I will send the recording out tomorrow. We'll see you, David. Bye.